Welcome to the Secret Art of Business. And today I have Aaron Murphy, who is CEO of ADM Architecture as well as Forever Home. Um, just looking at your website, it is amazing. So you're definitely a creative person and you have built some really great things. And the fact that you have spun off this Forever Home thing leads me to believe that you are still very much of an innovator. But I'm going to stop there because this, this story is yours. So why don't you tell us about both of your businesses? Um, you know, what we would need to know about ADM and what we would need to know about Forever Home. Sure. Uh, so yeah, ADM started back in uh, early 2009. I've been doing architecture since I graduated University of Washington in 1996. Uh, got licensed in 03, opened my own practice in 09. So that's where ADM was born from. Um, and then Forever Home's been a lifelong journey just has a fairly recent renaming and rebranding. And that really is, uh, we've been doing aging in place home solutions for the 50 plus marketplace for as long as this discussion has been going on, which 10,000 people started turning 65 in 2011, the baby boomers. And uh, so families needs are changing around housing and we've been doing it since then. Uh, but we decided that it deserved its own business for a number of reasons, just with regard to the hole in the market and the fact that we were the right person to fill it. I, I really love that idea for one, because I do think that is very much of a need, but can you explain exactly what that means aging in place and what you do? Of course. Yeah. So at the end of the day, aging in place is about freedom of choice. It's about independence. It's about autonomy. Uh, those kinds of things that we all deserve and feel that we deserve to be respected and deserve mm -hmm. to be mm -hmm. in charge of our housing solutions for as long as we live. But housing related to our longevity have become out of sync. We're still building houses the way we did coming out of World War II with the GI Bill, but our life expectancy has doubled in that amount of time. So what do we need to do different? And so aging in place is the idea that we can keep you home and safe and happy with your pet and your garden and your neighbors and your memories much longer with good planning. I, I love that. Absolutely love that. And I, I'll, I'll be calling you when I get to that age. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. They're not dragging me out of here. They're, I'm just going to have to make my house fit my needs now. That's right. That's okay. right. <laughs> so you um, were not born a CEO. You no. obviously were a child at some point, like we all were. I am really curious, what does an architect do when they're a kid? That's a great question. So I, I was the kid in high school who was my peachy. You remember what a peachy is. <laughs> Trapper keeper, things like that that date us, right? <laughs> Organizers for school. Well, mine was blue, covered in ink. I was always drawing. Um, and I was also realizing that I loved math right up into the point of calculus. Calculus was ethereal to me. It made no sense. It mm -hmm. did not have an application the way geometry and algebra and tri you know. And so drawing and math, not at the engineering level, I kind of went, well, wait a minute. Maybe I should use both sides of my brain. Maybe mm -hmm. I should mm -hmm. use the math side left and the art side right. And that's when I actually started looking into architecture. But, you know, we can go back to being toddlers and, you know, after the rain, building mud dams and things to stop the flow of water in the gutter. And, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I was always shaping things. I wasn't the kid that was under the hood of a car, but we were definitely building forts and climbing trees and creating community in the woods or, or whatever. So the, yeah, that, I mean, I can easily reflect on that as a part of my growing up. That's really awesome. I, I love that. And I forgot about mud dams. <laughs> Those were fun to make. <laughs> Sure, sure. And, here, and again, using left brain, right brain, how do I solve this problem? Now I want the water to go this way. And now you have to build something. So that's, that's really, really cool. And like I said, that ignited a memory in me too. Um, cool. So you decided in high school, I'm going to look into this. And did architecture come as a natural choice for you? Or did somebody suggest it to you? 
So yeah, junior year in high school, I took as I was doing that thought process of okay, if I'm only good here to this point as far as excitement. Anyway, I had a career counselor at the time, um, and so I took a drafting class, a very early sum drawing and maybe a little bit of computer, but mostly hand drafting back then uh, to test the theory. And it really did excite me, the idea of sketching and then hard lining something that could come to fruition in the built form. And that's really where that kind of ignited a passion. So as much as I would have liked to continue playing baseball at all the community colleges that asked me to come, <laughs> I had to make a decision about school because I'm not Jamie Moyer, the one in a million that makes it to the Mariners. So, right. uh, you know, I started thinking about school. And so I chose the University of Washington for school first uh, and then made baseball and choir and all the other things into hobbies. And, right, right. Uh, just made yeah yeah and you know and i sing in choir all the way through high school and music is a fascinating piece of both art and math yes i mean you can peel apart a, you know a piano song and it, it's very mathematical underneath mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the reason things sound good <laughs> exactly exactly i have to ask because i have to tell you the architecture does fascinate me i mean i am definitely a buff when it comes to like you know you're in a different city and you're like oh my god look at the architecture or look at those stairs and you know things like that what was the first thing you designed though do you hmm. remember like was it a house that got it? built or in that studio got built. that got built like you could see it in 3d when it was done okay uh the first thing I was a part of designing, weirdly, was what we call tilt-up, which is co like concrete warehouses and office buildings that were 60,000 square feet oh, wow. in a two-story building. So uh, where I cut my teeth as a young, on my way to licensed architect, was a firm that, and eventually we did uh, like auto dealerships and so, but I kind of started in the warehouse space and then into the office space and then auto dealerships and things like that. So that was kind of the beginnings of watching something that I drew go vertically into the air. That would be so cool. I mean, that would really be so cool. Um, all right, but then you went residential somewhere along the way. How did you get there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, moving out of Seattle is how I got there. So just everything from cost of living, pace of life, uh, moved a half hour ferry ride across the water to a little more uh, slower pace where I wanted to be a dad. Uh, so ended up having to switch firms, take a pay cut because mm -hmm. you're leaving the big city, <laughs> you know, go through all that. Um, and over here, you know, the bread and butter of a firm typically is uh, residential. So about two thirds of what we do is residential. We still do office and commercial buildings I, mm -hmm. you know my kids get to drive by a, a bank right on the highway that's two stories you can see it from the road and they're like hey dad did that so that's kind of a neat piece over here but yeah our bread and butter still is is residential and that's where i got into aging in place being a what's my unique sales position how do i differentiate myself and I had a grandmother go from five foot nine, traveling the world in retirement, playing bridge, playing cards with all her friends to five foot two trapped in a hospital bed and didn't know Carl's name. Now, at 23 years old, I didn't really want to know about grandma's hygiene, but I did notice that a split level home built in the 70s didn't do anything for her independence. Mm -hmm, There's mm -hmm. stairs everywhere to everything, laundry, the car, the shower. The... So anyway, that's where doing residential turned into a, oh my gosh, this, this is what I have to do. I have to solve this 50 plus marketplace problem that spec builders don't. That's really, really interesting. So um, I guess if someone has a split level home, I do, what do you do to make it so they can stay there? There's a number of things, but it's always going to depend on the person. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've 
I've never met an internet plan I didn't change because I make better, I ask better questions than Google, okay? <laughs> About how you actually live your life. Now, yeah. universal design just works better for everybody, whether it's your four-year-old or your 84-year-old. The rest of the conversation is really about peeling the onion and being compassionate and sensitive and patient enough to unfold truths. Because at the end of the day, all you sell is a dream come true or a pain avoided. That's if you sell, that's all you sell. Mm -hmm. Whether you know that or not is another discussion. But so if your goal is to make a dream come true, independence or whatever, or avoid a fear like a fall and assisted living and not being in charge of your solution, then we have to peel that onion. And so the final third or whatever of designing a home, I'm going to ask about your medical history. Did everybody get Parkinson's on your dad's side? Did everybody go deaf on your mom's side? We need to know that. And then we'll incorporate occupational therapists when it makes sense to do so because i know where grab bars go according to a law but the ot knows where go where grab bar goes according to are they left side strong are they upper body strong are they mm -hmm. leg right i don't know that stuff so i like bringing more people i think it's more brains more better right better solution i i think that's absolutely brilliant <laughs> i mean i really do because the minute you said, I know where the, it, it needs to go, you know, technically, legally, you know, um, it's, that's not always the answer. And it's something I never thought of because you thought you would think there'd be a lot of research behind that. But everybody is different, you know, crazy thought. And yeah, yeah. That. When we when when I present on stage and that's how I've gotten to become synonymous on the forever home and aging in place side in our Tri-County area. The second slide is from the Guinness Book of World Records, and it's the shortest guy in the world and the tallest guy in the world. I mean, it's like two foot three and eight foot 11 or something, right? And they're holding hands. And I tell people, the room we're in was designed for an able-bodied, right-handed, average height, average weight, perfect sight, perfect hearing, and the ability to communicate verbally with another human being. Is that you? Is it everyone you know? Is it everyone you want to come to Christmas? <laughs> that's really what we're discussing okay you can if you don't want to talk about getting older let's talk about visitability yeah i love oh, that's like i said that is that is really really brilliant and you know the fact that uh you just again just kept reinventing re you know kind of came up with this whole idea is it's very not only rewarding but re very brilliant i love it um so I guess my next question is, I mean, you are doing, uh, that's a very creative thing and clearly you have demonstrated that, but is there anything that you do um, that's like pure creative, like what you used to do? Like, uh, are you still building mud dams or are you, <laughs> or are you still yeah. filling up notebooks full of paper? Do you find yourself doodling a lot or what are you, what are you still doing that kind of um, gets you kind of out of your day-to-day -day creativity, I guess, and is something that might be a little more, I mean, how about even baseball? Do you still get to do any of that? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so one of the ways, you know, I I like to give back and I, you know, I, I tend to be philanthropic in nature when it comes to social cause, et cetera. So yeah, I get to give back with Rotary. I get to give back as a coach, coaching baseball for, we've coached most of our kids for most of their young lives. They're all teenagers now, there's four mm -hmm. of them. If you'd like one, we have extra. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, I'm trying to relearn uh, guitar. And that definitely is one creative solution. The other thing I find myself doing when I need, when I need relativity and when I need perspective, I'll drive to the beach and I'll write poetry. Oh, wow. I love that. And I, I never just... Well, I did. I, I journaled during the teen mm -hmm. angst years. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, writing for me always kind of came in the form of poetry. And so I will tend to keep a book that is just blank page with a pen. And um, yeah, for me, crashing waves is meditation. Mm -hmm. um, I do practice meditation. Um, but yeah, I think for me, it would be what comes naturally would be to sit down and write. 
what comes with some learning curve would be, you know, trying to really kind of get back into doing guitar regularly so that I could actually make progress and not do lesson one for the 32nd time this year. <laughs> that's, a, that's a personal goal. You can combine those two strengths eventually and, and create a song perhaps, you know, there are a few sure. simple chords and, you know, have words to it and all of that. That is really, yeah. really cool. People, talk, people always told me, they go, you can play guitar like a ninth grader if you can sing, because they won't even notice. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to bank on that. That that sounds promising. <laughs> that's great. That is so great. And, you know, there is something that's about very meditative about, you know, the ocean, too. And I that it's no accident that that's in a lot of, you know, you know background noise for meditation and people go to the beach or to draw into the beach, you know, it's probably a better term um, just because it gets you right up to that right side and you're not thinking like you normally do. You know, you're not around the white noise yeah. and the phones and the what have you. It is just hard hitting nature, which is awesome. Yeah. And for me too, I think it's, it really is relativity. It's gosh, if I went away, the earth would keep rotating and the next wave would come. It helps remind me of my insignificance, oh, which is grounding to me. I, I would agree. I, I think you know, nature is, is very good at that to remind us of, you know, kind of what's important and what we think is important, you know, are two completely different things. And, but I will say this, you know, what the work that you're doing is stuff that changes people's lives. You know, you are bringing them a great quality of life as a result. Um, so it's very admirable work. You know, it, it's probably a little bit of fun too, but it, I would have to think that's rewarding to a certain degree. Yeah, and I knew that going into architecture period that I felt like this was an opportunity to make dreams come true. Right mm -hmm. now, a commercial building is a different kind of dream yeah. than a home building is, but they're both somebody's pursuit and we're helping them get there. Mm -hmm. uh, on the forever home side, on the aging in place side of things, that's absolutely true. Um, and I've been doing that for 15 years as far as speaking on stage and educating, you know, B2C to the consumer at mm -hmm. the trade show, at the Rotary, at the... But eventually we end up at the state something or other show. And then eventually I end up with the owner of agingandplace.com and the first guy to ever do a remodel for a disabled person who actually right now, Louis Tenenbaum has a, a bill on the house floor at Capitol Hill trying to get tax break type incentives for making our homes safer. So eventually you kind of end up in that space and that, it's all fulfilling and I don't mind the mic and the stage. That's the closet choir boy in me and I'll go <laughs> carry with you with any time, but right. But that's kind of unique. Uh, most people are scared to death of public speaking. Oh, I'm absolutely. not. And so I feel like that is a personal, um, almost responsibility to, to go do that on behalf of all of us that are doing this work on the ground. Um, but yeah, Forever Home for me, I told my wife, I said, look, honey, my midlife crisis did not involve a Ferrari or a 20-year-old girlfriend. But what I lose sleep over is what could this be? And I need to go find out. And so that's what building the Forever Home website is about, is helping people nationally do what we do every day at ADM Architecture locally. Well, you are not only a visionary, but you are incredibly innovative. Um, it, yeah, I'm just really kind of blown away what you've been able to accomplish in what a relatively That's short sweet. period of time. Um, I have to ask, though, you know, um, because I want people to be able to get a hold of you as well, if need be. Do you mostly work regionally and then you, you educate people nationally or are you able to do work nationally? Yeah, good question. So that's actually what we're in the process of expanding. Uh, Forever Home, uh, and since you asked how to get a hold of us, it's foreverhome-us.com. Uh, our goal is to do this nationally. We're going to have stock plans at different size homes, ADUs, backyard mother-in-laws, to 
you know, 4,000 square feet with the elevator built in for the future. Okay. We're going to do that nationally. Now, do I need a local structural engineer to modify these plans for your property based on your soils, wind, snow? Yeah, we do. Um, but every stock plan you could buy on the internet does. The other thing I'm doing is I'm choosing to, instead of B to C, I've gone B to B, which is to say, there need to be a thousand of me in the United States. So it's time to train the trainer. So we're actually doing business coaching for people that have some of these baseline certifications that are three day, you know, CAPS course or a CLIP course or a what is it? SRES for real estate agents or a CSA, certified senior advisor. Anybody that's in these industries knows what those are. Um, and we're trying to say, OK, that's a great introduction, but it's three days. I wouldn't let you in my mom's house. To design her future, I've been doing this for 15 years, not three days. Let's train the trainer. Let's teach small business how to make this a new revenue stream because the opportunity is is insane with regard to the chunk of our population and our new future of longevity with tech and medical advance. 100%. Absolutely. How exciting. I'm very excited for you. This this is great. This is really, really great. You're sweet. Thank and you. I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your story. Um, showing that, you know, stay creative, even if you're going to the beach to write poetry or whatever, because it's important. It's important because I don't think you would be as innovative if you didn't really honor that side of you. Um, so it, it's really wonderful. It's a good point. It, you know, and I actually said that to my father, who's 73 and sold his third business to retire. Uh, you know, I, I said to him, I go, it is so hard. It doesn't even work in my brain wiring. That, but all the truth medically is there. All the data is there. An hour of extra sleep or an hour of exercise or an hour of creativity away from your industry all benefits your work productivity. But convince me to leave my desk at hour 11 to make time for that when I'm in the middle of a thought at my computer it's so hard. Oh, I'm working on it. I work on it daily. I could be here just on this passion 14, 16 hours a day. No problem. If I didn't have a wife and kids and I wanted to stay married, which I do. <laughs> but that is like the perfect thing, though, because if you and it goes back to that old saying of, you know, if you find a job that you love, you never work a day in your life. You know, so that's why mm -hmm. I think it's kind of hard for me to pull away because I love what I'm doing. So it's really right. the people that hate their jobs that just <laughs> purposely pull themselves away to do those three things. Um, but people like you and me were having a great time. So maybe we don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I will have all your information in the comments when this gets posted. But I really cool. appreciate your time. And I appreciate oh. you again sharing your story. Well, it was a blessing to meet you and spend a little time chatting about what we do. Well, thank you. Thank you.